everyone. So welcome to my new channel where I'm here to make use of this welder that I'm about to unbox, but also get myself certified in welding. And hopefully along the way as videos progress with this channel, not only will you see me learn how to weld, which I kind of already know how to do. I'm just, I want to get good enough that I can be certified so I can go into the business of being a welder. Because, you know, gender studies doesn't seem to be all that profitable. Anyways, um, if I can help anyone else who's getting certified as well, that will just that will just be that much more awesome. What we're going to do today is we're going to unbox this welder that I just bought. This is a uh, it's a PowerMig 140C is what's actually in the box. And the reason why I decided to go with this welder, well, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I got a hell of a deal on this from Craigslist. I originally was going to go with a Lincoln PowerMig 140HD, which is version of this that they sell at your local Home Depot. I only live down the road from my Home Depot, so that was kind of a big deal to me if I can get it there and then be able to get all the parts and stuff I need for it there. Worst case scenario, if let's say I'm doing some welding on this truck and it's in a position where I can't really just get it in and drive it to the local Home Depot, it takes me almost as long to walk there. So that was kind of the rationale there for getting one from Home Depot. But they do carry a lot of the consumables that I would need for this welder there as well. Um, the difference between this one and the HD model is one, the HD model is, as far as I know, only sold at Home Depot. And this one's got a better drive system. The voltage output on it, which we'll be seeing in a bit, um, not so much the voltage, but the current output on it is continuously adjustable. Like on the, um, on the Home Depot model, it's, it just there's just certain positions it clicks into. Being that I'm going to use this on a lot of body work, on a lot of sheet metal welding, I'm do, going to do some work on this truck here. I've also got an old bug in the back that's going to get a lot of work done to it. I need to be able to adjust my current output so I don't burn through sheet metal. So that's kind of why I like this one a lot better than the HD model. And also the fact that I didn't pay as much for the HD model for this one, even though this one normally retails more. Well, that was just awesome. So... Let me go ahead and unbox it. I already cut the uh, seal on this. And that was mostly to make sure I didn't just drop money on a uh, on a box of bricks. Because I heard about that happening to people who buy, like, PlayStations and stuff from, like, pawn shops or off of Craigslist or something. So let's, let's see what's in the box. All right. First thing we have here is something with a cord on it. That's probably the power cord to my welder. It is a 120-volt welder, which means it'll plug into the same outlet as your microwave. Which is great because um, that makes it more portable. It's not quite as powerful as a dual voltage or as a, a 230 volt model, but it'll get the job done, or at least the job that I wanted to do. All right, this here looks like a ground strap, which you're going to need. You're going to weld. All right, a little bit of cardboard here, plenty of cardboard to go to the kitty. We have a cat. Our cat likes cardboard. In fact, she's been jumping around on this box with a very upset look on her face, like, why can't I go in it? All right, so in here, in this box, inside of the box, we have, we have our MIG wire. This is, looks to be the flux core wire. We also have our regular MIG wire. So, and these, let's see, 0.25, that's actually good for doing sheet metal work. 0.35, that's for doing stuff a little bit heavier. So that's cool. Got the ground clamp itself. Now this, ooh, I'm liking this. I'm liking this for one reason here. Because it's a pretty heavy clamp. Also, it's got that copper strap there, so you get a good ground with that. I like that. All right. And next up here, I'm not sure what this is. I'll figure that out in the instruction manual. Um, regulator. My very first MIG welder, by the way, was a uh, Daytona MIG, pocket MIG. And what I actually broke on it was the regulator, which caused me not to be able to use it with gas, but that regulator is a lot nicer and probably a lot easier for me to replace. Also looks like it takes the same kind of parts as every other welder, or most other welders, which was another problem I had with my pocket MIG, is it was a foreign-made welder, and yes, I'll know I did this this time. And um, being that it was a foreign-made welder, it was very hard for me to find replacement parts for it, even like consumables and stuff like that. It was hard for me to replace, and the guy at the welding supply was like, dude, get a Lincoln. So, I got a Lincoln. 
But a Miller or Hobart, also good quality brand and also pretty easy to get consumables for. So this right here, this is the actual uh, the gun, the actual welding handle here. So, again, it just screws off there, that's the tip. That looks like a tip that's used for flux core wire. So somewhere in this, there should be a, um, another tip for use with uh, MIG wire. And see, that would be where it all hooks up to the machine. So, all right, this looks like a gas line. The gas line on my pocket mig was like this real thin, like it was like surgical tubing. It was a joke. I'm kind of embarrassed I spent money on it, but it did it did get its job done. Um, looks like we got some small parts here, different tips, and possibly a little tool here. That's kind of neat. Very important books, manuals. Back in my days when I used to do tech support. Oh, hey, I didn't get a DVD with it. Warning stickers, very important. Different books, advertisements, guides, learning to weld. So that's kind of cool. But, but as I was saying, back when I used to do tech support, one of my favorite things to say was, read the fucking manual. So, shouldn't be a hypocrite and actually read the manuals. Now the big part of all this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a hold of this handle, and slide this out. That can go to the kitty. She'll have a lot of fun in there. All right, and here it is. And see, this is what I was talking about before. This here, the... Um, the 140 HD, this just has different settings that it clicks into place. This here I can adjust it in between. So that'll allow me to kind of dial in um, the, uh, the current output I need in order to get done whatever I'm trying to do. So like I said, if I'm doing a lot of sheet metal welding, I don't want to get burned through because burn through is just ugly. And then I could also adjust the uh, wire feed output that was the other thing, the, the, my first MIG welder, my pocket MIG, it like, it had two switches on it for the, uh, the current outputs. But I was a teenager when I bought that thing. Alright, so if we turn this around, we got, okay, there's that stuff there. Alright, and we open this door up. This is our drive. This is where our spool goes. This here is in case you need to reverse the polarities on the um, on the output. Certain MIG wire or certain MIG processes, it requires you to run an, either a positive ground or a negative ground depending on depending on what you're doing with it. This here, this was kind of the big selling point to this, is this big heavy cast aluminum drive for the. Uh, For the, for the wire. So that's that's nice that it has that. That is. That's really nice. And then the wire runs through here. These are the spools. So that's that's real nice. I like that. This welder, I'm looking for the options on it. Uh, here it's up here. This is um, spool gun ready, which means if I'm going to do welding on aluminum, which I probably am someday, I could use this welder to do it and use a spool gun rather than trying to feed aluminum wire through this, which from what I've seen in other people's videos doesn't work very well. Also, it's really nice it's got this little chart here on the door that tells me what to use in what situation. So that's wonderful. It even points out to me to use a spool gun for welding aluminum. Um, what I've already got for this, which you don't see here from my old power mig, or from my old pocket mig, is I do have a um, 7525 argon tank. So that'll go with this. Screw you, Mr. Garbage Man, messing up my video. So that's, that's really all there is to it. Um, I'm going to spend my next video setting this thing up, 
giving it a few tests, but uh, right now, right now, I got a kind of small mess to clean up and some things to put away. So, um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time where I'm actually going to attempt to use this thing. Yeah, I'd say don't try this at home, but I am at home.